Hello there, Stephanie Cameraman, the Stock Whisperer, here to tell you the Weekly Whisper for January 28th, 2018. This whisper will be pretty much covering all of the major sectors. Um, I have been tallying up where all the dark pool has been trading all week long, and I have some amazing trade setups for you. But before we get to this week's whisper, we got to talk about last week's whisper, right? Yeah, January 21st, we had our eye on the SPY. And uh, the SPY, wow, we had massive levels last week, but guess what? We had bigger levels this week. So last week, we were only bearish below 276.08. And you can see we clearly stayed above that. And we had more massive levels, 35 million dark pool prints at 283.25. So I'm gonna draw a line, 283.25, right about here. Massive, uh, probably the biggest level we've had in a really, really long time. So as long as we stay above here, I'm going to be bullish. But if we break below that, I would assume we were gonna probably either retrace to this eight exponential moving average. And if we can't hold that, we would go down to 276 area. But I'm gonna be very bullish as long as we stay above that. So that's a key level for that. Also, last week we were watching the QQQs and we were bullish over 165.80. So let me just draw a line there, if you recall. Okay, so we had a lot of prints the week before. We stayed above that and the QQQs uh, went as high as 170.95. Wow. Uh, massive. We didn't have any big prints this week. So pretty light this week. Really the heaviest prints were on the SPY. But I am going to be bullish above 170. That's such a key level. The $5 increments are always the strongest. So as long as we stay above that, going to be bullish on the Qs. Also the Russell, two weeks in a row, a very, very light print. So I'm not going to trade it until I see where the big boys are buying or selling. Now we started to have prints on fear, the VXX last week. We were watching that 2750 level. We got a few more this week. As you can see, the volume uh, starts to get pretty heavy, right? It's been really dead. I mean, look, look at the difference, right? You can really see that we had like nothing and then all of a sudden it's like fear is coming in so yeah you definitely want to watch this uh, i would be bullish on fear above 28 so let me just draw that line for you so you can see that there all right so let's talk about gold you guys know i've been loving gold if you've been following me oh my goodness i've been really in love with gold we had some massive prints on um IAU last week, if you recall, 6 million at 1294. Uh, sorry, 1285. We were bullish above 1294. And IAU, you can see, really popped up to about 1311. Now, this is very slow. I, I love to trade gold, but I trade GLD or GDX. Uh, but I do monitor gold by the dark pool prints on IAU. So this is a, still a pretty key level for IAU. I know we got some more prints this week. We got about um, 4 million came in from 12.99 to 13.05, okay? So uh, I'm gonna talk about the dollar in just a little bit because that's really going to affect all. We may get a retracement here, but I would be bullish if we popped above 1312, but right now we may pause a little bit and I'll get to that in just a little bit, but let's just go to silver first. Okay, so silver, we had that major trend breakout here. I had drawn a, uh, a trend line for you last week. Uh, it seems to disappear. Here's one, but yeah, right, this one is the one 
that we were watching. Um, so yeah, we were bullish above 1625 and you can see it clearly broke above. Uh, went all the way to the top of the channel, 1662. So that's the next uh, major level to watch on uh, on SLV is 1662. So let me just uh, write that here. All right, so we're going to be bullish above that. But I'm going to get to that in just a minute with the dollar because there's something really big happening that could affect gold, silver, and oil. That's the next thing I want to talk about is uh, oil. So we had pretty big prints on USO. I told you about that last week at about uh, $12.80 and $12.87. And we were only bullish uh, above 13, bearish below 12.80. And look at this explosion. Really, oil has been just almost parabolic. Yeah, I love it. We've had a lot of great trades in my trading room on oil. We had a uh, 1.5 million print at 1320 and 1319. So I am still bullish above 13 from those previous prints, but really 1320 is going to be a key key level. Yeah, if we can stay above that this week, definitely going to be uber bullish, but I got to tell you about the dollar. Actually, um, I'm going to tell you about the dollar right now. Just let me show you this chart. So yeah, here's the weekly chart of the dollar. And yeah, we broke this major support right here. And um, we got down, let me just zoom out so you can see just how, um, how powerful this, these trend lines are. But uh, we came down and bounced off of this support line right here at 88.43 uh, area. And now I'm gonna just zoom in. Yeah, so this is so key. We closed above it, but if we close below it next week on the dollar, then gold, silver, oil can rally up to the next level. So this is really such a key component. If you're trading gold and oil, you definitely want to watch this uh, 88.43. But also, we're going to see prints this week. And that's always the best. Now, we do get prints on the dollar. Um, actually, it was a little ironic. We didn't get anything on UUP and USDU. We do get prints. Uh, that'll give us an indicator. I have a feeling that we're going to see some this week. So I'll definitely be tweeting those out. Uh, but yeah, so that's why I'm a little hesitant on gold and uh, oil and silver right now because we're at such a crucial point. Um, and so stay tuned. Let's go to financials. So last week I told you about that massive print on Wells Fargo. We were bullish above uh, 64.50 and wow this thing had such a great move I uh, hope you got this you guys this was a really great trade off those prints and uh, I'm watching XLF we had some prints on XLF this week yeah 30 is such a key level uh, we closed at about 30 20 yeah this is really key as long as we stay above 30, I'm going to be bullish on the financials. Um, we had some prints that came in around uh, 3.4 million on Wednesday at 29.95. And then we had another 3 million at 29.78 to 81. And another 4 million on Monday, 29.52 to about 61 area. So, yeah, we've definitely had some heavy prints from here, here to here. You can see there's uh, quite a bit of high volume on this day, and we closed above all of them. So again, bullish as long as we stay above the prints, but 30, really, really key level. Okay, so let's talk about XLU, Utilities ETF. I love this. You can see, um, it. I told you about the volume last week, and you can see that the volume is still continuing to come in really heavy. It takes a while to form a really good bottom. It's going to have a pretty big move. 
and it looks like it's happening and starting to move up. We've been bullish above those prints that we started to see at $49.91 and $50.29. We were bullish above $50.50 and it finally popped up. So I still love this. We had more big prints that uh, came in this week um, around that same area just give me a minute to get them up let's see we had about 1.6 million at 50 68 and um another 1.1 million at 50 dollars and 42 cents so yeah as long as we stay above 51 i absolutely love this my next target would be this next moving average the simple SMA, that's about 51.87, give or take a penny or two. Okay, so let's talk about uh, one of my favorite beverages, coffee. Yeah, I love coffee. I love Starbucks. However, the earnings were awful. This is a great opportunity, you guys, to pick this up at a discount. Now, normally I don't try to bottom fish, but we had really big prints that came in on Starbucks. We had a 400,000 print at 57.75. Let me just draw a line there. And then we had another half a million at 56.99. I know my traders in the pit were rocking this one on Friday after we spotted those prints. And I'm gonna be bullish as long as it stays above 58. I'm always a bullish above the prints. I don't go bearish unless we break below. Like I would only be bearish below 57.50. Okay, but I'm bullish above the prints and then uber bullish above each level that we break above it. Now, what I really love um, about Starbucks is that seasonality starts now over the past 20 years. Starbucks has rallied at the end of January all the way to the beginning of April. And I love when seasonality and the prints line up. So that happens so many times um, with Starbucks in particular. Yeah, in fact, uh, in my new book coming out, I have a, a chapter where I talk about that and show you all those big prints, especially on Starbucks. So love it. Um, let's talk about another stock, CTL. CTL. Yeah, we spotted some really amazing price action. A huge print, a million share print at $17.85. And let me just draw a line there. Yeah, CenturyLink. We don't normally uh, get such big prints every once in a while. And uh, what I love about this, it's really been in this downward trend. In fact, just gonna draw a trend line. And you can see that we've uh, broken out and now we have a big print. So I'm gonna be bullish as long as it stays, of course, above the print and above 17.85, but 18 is key level. And my first target's gonna be 19. And then of course, if it can break above that 20 and then 20.60, but be careful because the earnings are coming out okay february 14th valentine's day earnings you guys it's earnings season so i want you to be careful with technology this week especially because facebook is coming out now last week i told you about those massive prints on facebook and we were bullish above 182.50 it had to break this trend line right here and wow, it rallied to 190. This was an amazing trade. Hope you got this. Now this week though, be careful. I'm not gonna trade it until after the earnings come out. And also we had BABA last week. Remember those massive prints on BABA that we had and we were bullish above 184. And wow, look at this thing. It popped all the way to 205. I know my traders. Uh, rock this one in particular. Uh, Bob was a great trade. Never went below, just straight up uh, from when I called out the whisper last week. But be careful, okay, because earnings are Thursday, February 1st. Okay, yeah, you want to make sure you're not in stocks. You know, when you have a big profit like this and 
earnings are coming out. I know a lot of you don't want to hold these things. There's definitely things you can do to put protection on using options, and but don't just hold them because it's awful. You know, if they're not good and the stock comes all the way back down, you know, you're definitely gambling into earnings. There are specific trades that we could put on using options that are very strategic, but if you're just going to be holding the stock without any protection, that's definitely uh, gambling. And I love to trade it before and after, but not into earnings. Okay, so just be careful on technology altogether because these earnings are going to affect all the other tech stocks. So uh, financials would be good this week. And of course, just watch that spy. Most of the financials already came out. Uh, oh, let me tell you about this other big print that we spotted this week. Wow. Target. Some of you like to call it Target. Target at a two million print you guys that is like the biggest print ever for target seventy six dollars and ninety five cents so here's how we're going to trade it i'm really excited because it's lining up perfectly right now here's where the print is i'm going to be bullish above 77.50 we can find some really cheap uh, option plays if you're going to in my room this week i'll definitely show you how to put those on but this is going to be amazing now if it breaks above 77.50, I'm going to be bullish. However, if it breaks below 76.50, I'm going to be bearish, okay? Especially on a close. When, when we're swing trading, it's all about the close. There's a lot of noise that happens during the day, but it's where a stock closes that's so important. If you're day trading, that's completely different. But when I'm a swing trade, I don't like to swing stocks that close weak. Whenever you have a wick at the top, like right here, yeah, it usually retraces down. When you have a wick at the bottom, then they usually move up. When you have a doji like this guy over here, complete indecision candle. The bulls and the bears came to a battle. Nobody won. You always want to wait for the next day. And if it closes above the high, like this doji right here, if it closes above the high in the next two days, uber bullish. And if it were to close below the low, that would be uber bearish, especially because this was a high volume doji. The volume was higher on this candle than the day before. So I love that. I look for those high volume dojis all the time. Here's another one. See this one on the chart? Yeah, high volume doji and it closed above it the next day and off it went, all right? So make sure you look and see where it's closing. So how many of you trade cryptocurrency? I love it. I trade crypto all the time uh, in my room. A lot of my traders trade it. I'm gonna be uh, putting out a, a workshop on that soon. Uh, but here are the levels to watch on crypto. So on Bitcoin, this is really the big guy, this 11,500 level is really, really key, okay? So we're gonna be bullish above, bearish below, no thinking, watch that 500 level. And also Ethereum, I've been watching this one uh, all day today. This 1200, huge, huge level. Yeah, as long as we stay above, it's gonna be bullish. If we go below, then I won't be bullish anymore. I don't short crypto, but uh, those levels are really key to know when you're going long. So come join me all day long. I trade live, I post my entries, my exits. I teach you as I'm trading in the Java Pit trading room. Happy trading, everybody. No thinking, that's my secret. My secret